Hello everyone! Welcome to this tutorial on Bootstrap 4 Flexbox Utility Classes. My goal is to provide you with some code examples and illustrations at the end of this tutorial that will hopefully help you learn more about using Flexbox with Bootstrap 4. Bootstrap 4 has some utility classes that make it easy for you to implement Flexbox within your layouts. Using Flexbox you can easily make responsive web designs. If you want to learn about Flexbox CSS code, I have a separate tutorial for that. This tutorial is about how to use the Flexbox utility classes within Bootstrap 4. First thing, always make sure that you include a link to the Bootstrap 4 CSS CDN within the head section of each page where you need to use the Bootstrap classes. You can find this link by searching on Google for Bootstrap 4 CDN and then clicking on the first link which says Introduction Bootstrap. Scroll down to the Quick Start section and copy the first link. Place that in the head section of your document. With Flexbox, you have Flex Containers and Flex Items. The direct child elements of the Flex Container are the Flex Items. With CSS, you set the display property of the parent container to Flex to make it a flex box. With Bootstrap 4, you apply the Bootstrap class of d-flex to the parent. The d-flex class creates a flex container that takes up the entire width of its parent. The p-2 class creates padding for the element. I included this because it is included in the Bootstrap flex box documentation example. Let's take a look at our code so far. We have two flex containers. One is a row and the other is a column, which we will discuss further momentarily. First, you can see that I have applied the d-flex class to the parent container to make it a flex container. Next, I have applied the flex-row class to set the direction in which the elements will be displayed. In the second example, I have applied the flex-column class to set the direction in which those elements will be displayed. Let's take a look. Now let's discuss flex direction. You can specify the direction with which you want your child elements to be laid out within the parent element by using the direction class utilities. The default class is flex-row without specifying any direction. The flex-row class, as seen here, causes your elements to be displayed from left to right horizontally within the parent container. The flex-column class, as seen here, causes your elements to be displayed from top to bottom within your parent container. We also have the classes of flex-row-reverse and flex-column-reverse, which will reverse the direction of your flex items. Now you can see that the flex items for flex-row-reverse are displayed from right to left. The flex items for flex-column-reverse are displayed from bottom to top. Our next topic is alignment. Flex items are aligned along a main and cross axis. When flex direction is set to flex dash row or flex dash row dash reverse, the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical. When flex direction is set to flex dash column or flex dash column dash reverse, the main axis is vertical and the cross axis is horizontal. At the end of this tutorial, I will show you an illustration to demonstrate this visually. You will use Justify Content classes on your Flexbox containers to change the alignment of flex items along the main axis. Apply the Justify-Content-Start class to your flex container to have all of your flex items aligned to the left side of the flex container along the main axis when flex direction is set to flex-row or the top of the flex container along the main axis when flex direction is set to flex-column. Justify-Content-Start is the default. Apply the Justify-Content-End class to your flex container to have all of your flex items aligned to the right side of your flex container along the main axis when flex direction is set to flex-row or to the bottom of your flex container along the main axis when flex direction is set to flex-column. Apply the Justify Content Center class to align the items along the center of the main axis. 
apply the Justify Content Between class to align the first child at Flex Start, the last child at Flex End, and even space between all the children along the main axis. Apply the Justify Content Around class to have space evenly displayed between every child element along the main axis. The Align Items classes change the alignment of the flex items along the cross axis. When flex direction is set to flex dash row or flex dash row reverse, the cross axis is the y axis or the vertical axis. When flex direction is set to flex dash column or flex dash column dash reverse, the cross axis is the x axis or the horizontal axis. The classes are as follows Align dash items dash start. This class aligns flex items from the start of the cross axis, which for flex row would be the top of the vertical axis, and for flex column would be the start of the cross axis, which is horizontal and starts on the left side. Align dash items dash end. This class aligns flex items from the end of the cross axis, which for flex row would be the bottom of the vertical axis, and for flex dash column would be the end of the cross axis, which is a horizontal axis and ends on the right side. Align-items-center. This class aligns the flex items along the center of the cross axis. Align-items-baseline. This class aligns the flex items along the baseline of the items. Align-items-stretch. This class stretches the flex items across the cross axis and this is the default. Use the Align Self classes on the Flex items to set the alignment on individual children across the cross, along the cross axis. I will give the first Flex item a class of Align-Self-Start, the second Flex item a class of Align-Self-Center, and the last Flex item a class of Align-Self-End. There are also classes of align self dash baseline and align self dash stretch. You can specify how you want the flex items to wrap within their flex container by using the flex wrap classes. The default is flex dash no wrap, which causes the flex items not to wrap, meaning they will continue on the same line. The other options include flex-wrap, which wraps the flex items to the next line when they run out of space within their container, and flex-wrap-reverse, which wraps the flex items in the reverse order. Now let's take a look at some visual illustrations. In this first illustration, the square is a flex container. Since I have given my flex container a flex direction of flex row, we have a horizontal main axis and a vertical cross axis. These are used for alignment of the flex items. In this second illustration, my flex container has a flex direction of flex dash column. We have a vertical main axis and a horizontal cross axis. In this final image, I have typed out a visual recap of what we have learned in this tutorial. On the left side, we have the flex container, which is the parent or the container that surrounds the child elements. Underneath it I have listed the classes that we can apply to the flex container. D-flex is the class that sets the display to flex. Justify-content which aligns the flex items along the main axis. Align-items which aligns flex items along the cross axis. On the right side we have flex items which are the immediate children of the flex container. They are contained within the flex container. Align dash shelf for individual alignment of one element. I really hope that this tutorial has been helpful. I repeated important information because most people learn through repetition. Feel free to leave comments and please subscribe to my channel Bootstrap CSS Girl.